Okay, so to start off with quite a big question, do you think there is a stigma around women not being funny? Yes, I think there is, um, and obviously there shouldn't be. And I think mm. it's a, I think it's a really artificial thing that yeah. has come relatively recently. Mm. I think when we talk about the are women funny debate, which is absolutely ludicrous, and I think the idea of there even being articles about that is unhelpful. Yeah. Um, it's as if it's an age-old debate, and it's not. I think historically women have been that that hasn't been an opinion that has been voiced or thought of i think it's just in the last few sort of decades kind of thing that that has been more perpetuated sort of um and so i, I think that things are changing for the better but yeah it's definitely just through personal experience there's definitely there are stages not many but there are stages where you walk out and people go like that, mm. like it's a woman. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's definitely a thing, but mm. it's improving. Do you ever find that quite disheartening and you know deter you from talking about certain subjects? Yeah, you do. Yeah, it doesn't deter me from deter me from talking about certain subjects, but it does mm. uh, make you feel like you're on the back foot and that mm. you've got something to prove yeah. immediately. It's just the same, you know, sort of male privilege and white privilege, that kind of thing that mm. you you have to prove people wrong as opposed to just people going, ah. Oh, Who's this then? Mm. So, I love your sections on the MASH report on Thank BBC you. Two, where you spoke about subjects like sexual harassment and yeah. gender equality. I wondered if you could tell me a bit about the sort of response you get from that on social media. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> well, quite overwhelming mm. um, initially. Uh, something we never expected mm. and wasn't prepared for at all. So, just the number of views that it got was very surprising mm -hmm. uh, and then came the more specific reactions so one w one of the lovely things was the positivity mm -hmm. that people especially the sexual harassment one from people all over the world from the United States from India from mm -hmm. South Africa, from Europe, um, really places that I wouldn't have expected necessarily um, got in touch with me and were like <laughs> not only I found this funny, but I found this genuinely informative, oh. which is terrifying yeah. <laughs> when you think about it. Um, but there were obviously negative comments as well. Um, some people saying, oh, you shouldn't laugh about this, which mm. I really disagree with. Mm. I think you should be able to laugh about any subject as long as your target is the right one. Mm. And obviously the target was people not understanding yeah. <laughs> where the line is. Um, and I got a lot of uh, trolling, if you like, uh, about uh, the Trump one that we did, mm. Trump and Piers Morgan. So I had some really vicious trolling, but my answer to that is just to don't read it, change your settings, mm. um, it shouldn't happen. And I think that Twitter has absolutely a responsibility to do better yeah. in terms of the abuse that um, women get and the mm. racist abuse that Nish gets is absolutely horrendous. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, my solution has been to <laughs> have very strict settings. Mm. So I basically now only see the settings of people that follow me, which yeah. helps. Which still, it still includes some criticism, but yeah. not nearly as much as you would get. Okay. So has the landscape for female comedians changed at all? Yes, absolutely. I think if you look at um, who's being championed by channels, who's mm. being given um, stand-up specials on Netflix, you know, mm. who's being talked about and celebrated. Mm. Hannah Gadsby, Sarah Pascoe, Catherine Ryan. I think people are coming through. Um, Desiree Birch, uh, Sophie Duker, Susie Ruffle. There's, there's incredible women and um, diverse groups of women as well being given a voice that they haven't before. However, mm. there are still huge problems. If you look at the um, travel documentaries that are being commissioned. That's been a really specific disappointment uh, mm. of it's all men. There's mm. about there's about like 15 travel documentaries. You know the things like Jack Whitehall and his dad, Ramesh yeah. and his mum and all mm. of those. I think it's just like 19 men plus Joanna Lumley. Mm. And there are still frustrations there. Mm. Like it's, it's, it's getting better, but it's still, it's still not equal. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I wanted to talk to you about the BBC's policy of an all-male ban on a lot of their shows and what your stance on that is and how that makes you feel. Um, I think it was a step in the right direction mm. to say that we've got to have at least one woman. Mm. But I think it was really damaging to publish it. Mm. I feel then that as a woman you go on it and you feel, you feel like a token mm. and the people watching it think you are a token. Mm. And I think that's super unhelpful. I mm. uh, also find it fascinating that they only did that with women, not with people of colour or LGBTQ people. Mm. Um, and there is a more unspoken policy about that with the BBC. You know, you, you often do have one person of colour, you know, rarely an LGBT person, but sometimes. But they didn't choose to make that known. Mm. Um, and I think that was the right thing. And those policies were more under the covers, which is how it should be. Like, do the right thing, but don't try and get brownie points for it, because then it makes, it makes you feel like a quota yeah. kind of thing. So that would sort of lead on to my last question. Um, what would you say to women that want to get into the comedy industry? My advice would be just get out there and um, get gigging as soon as you can. Um, that I think you sometimes feel like you have to have your magnus opus before you go. But I would say write a few jokes and then just get doing it live as soon as possible because you won't know if you like it or this is sorry, this isn't actually for women, this is just for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> this is irrelevant, <laughs> whether you're a woman or not. Um, get out there, get gigging. Um, and this is also for both, but I think it applies a lot to women, which is uh, don't worry if your style is different. Mm -hmm. um, if your style is different to the... I remember, for me, uh, when I started, I envied the um, volume and the kind of ranting quality and the dynamism, if you like, of some of the male comedians I was watching. Mm. And that ain't me, that ain't me. And I never succeeded when I tried to copy that. Mm. I succeeded when I was, um, got humor out of what I am, which is quiet and polite and, <laughs> and a bit whimsical and a bit sort of using the words, the weird wording that I wanted to use. Mm. And everyone's, everyone's different. You know, so be yourself and don't try to copy other people.